In this golden age of Australian boxing, this is the next big thing. Harry Garside. 24 years old, the world in these lightning hands. Olympic medalist, Australia's first in 33 years. A ballet dancing plumber. Yeah, that's right, a ballet dancing plumber. Began boxing as a scallywag nine-year-old. Now, a fearless fighter and role model in the relentless pursuit of changing the world and winning championships. Harry Garside, Aussie Boxing's next big thing. Yeah, one of the good guys of Australian boxing, unless you're on the end, of course, of a few of his right jabs. Uh, and he fights in his second professional fight next Wednesday. Welcome, Harry Garside. Hey. Lovely to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. It's where are we? The, the back end of, the, of March. Now, I read that you haven't had a hot shower this year. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> haven't had a hot shower this year. Meditated every day this year and read a chapter of a book every day this year. Wow. Yeah. I haven't had a cold shower this year, so we've got equal discipline. <laughs> What do you, when I always ask boxers when they're on this, what, that moment when you get in the ring before the fight starts, are you happy to be where you are? Are you shitting yourself? What, what, what's the feeling? It's a cocktail of emotions, really, and, and no one can really prepare you or talk about it, really. You have to really be in it. But I think for me, I feel most alive when I'm in that moment. Um, the fight or flight response is very present. I'm anxious, nervous, confident. Uh, my preparation's been good. There's so many things going through my mind, but as I said, it makes me feel the most alive and that's why I'm addicted to it. Of all the statistics around your career, the one that caught my eye, when you first started, you lost 10 of your first 18 fights as a kid. Now, I can only imagine what that would have done to your confidence, but you kept going. It must, was it gruelling? Yeah, I was terrible, mate. There's no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no line. But um, I think for me, my coach, Brian Levere, he's 79 this year. He fought Johnny Famachon, Lionel Rose back in his day. He fed me with so much love and positivity and he made me feel special. And I think every kid just wants to feel special and that's the reason why I kept going back because I wanted to make him proud, make my family proud and, of course, make myself proud. Harry, uh, the Olympic experience for you, and uh, I just noted that uh, quite depressingly that you weren't born when I went to the Olympics. <laughs> uh, in fact, you probably weren't even an idea. Um, when I went, and, and all the Olympics, apart from the last one, it's been a celebration. There's the village, uh, there's, you know, the opening ceremony, getting ready for your tournament. If you get knocked out, you're still in the village. And at the end, it's a big party because for the closing ceremony. But you lived a very different experience with this Olympics. Absolutely. With what's going on in the world at the moment, I was just grateful for it to happen, to be honest. And I failed five times to make an Olympic Games and to wow. finally get the opportunity to look down at my heart and see the Olympic rings with the Australian emblem. I'm still pinching myself, mate. You know I mean, I'm just a sporting fan. I still think I'm just a little boy from Lillardale. And, um, yeah, to be surrounded by people like Ash Barty, Jess Fox, Kate Campbell, Paddy Mills, like, I was just gobsmacked and in awe the whole time. So I was um, very honoured to be there and just grateful the Japanese community put it on because it was a big stress, obviously, with what went on in the world the last three years. What a great answer. Yeah. Harry, you've got a smile on your face when you're talking about the Olympics, yet recently you've said that getting a bronze medal was disappointing. Mm, absolutely. I think as athletes, if we want to be the best, if we want to be the greatest of all time, you've got to have that mindset. If it's not the gold medal, then you mean it's a failure, as simple as that. And I'll always have that mindset. I'm always chasing the next win. I want to be like the Serena Williams, the Kathy Freemans, the Ian Thorpes. I want to be like these guys in the future. And um, I want the next generation to be, to be looking up to me like I looked up to people like Grant Hackett and Ian Thorpe and Kathy Freeman. Boxing is, there's a lot of toxic masculinity in boxing. This is what I love about you, Harry, as well. When you were talking about your meditation before and, and different methods of training to get yourself in there, can we focus on ballet first as well? Whose idea was that to do the ballet? 
Ballet was mine. So, wow. I, yeah, my favourite fighter, Vasily Lomachenko, he did traditional Ukraine dancing. I've got him tatted on my leg. He's unbelievable. Um, Two-time Olympic gold medalist. And I just thought if he can add half a percent at that level, half a percent is, is massive. So I started in 2019 and absolutely fell in love with it, mate. Are you and, good at it? Oh, I'm terrible still. But I try, <laughs> I try my best. Does it help with flexibility and, and, and just all that kind of oh, strength? Wow. There's, yeah. There is. Because you have a no dickhead policy on your... Uh, uh, tattoos on your leg, don't you? <laughs> I do, mate. Because <laughs> there's yeah, some great boxers there, Ali, but we don't see. I don't. We don't see Floyd Mayweather. Uh, we don't see Mike Tyson there. Yeah, absolutely. I think I don't want to like disrespect someone no. in any way, no. shape, or form. But Mike Tyson was convicted of rape. Floyd Mayweather. Um, beat his missus up, was convicted of domestic violence, and I don't support that, mate. They were fantastic athletes, not taking anything away from that. But I think, as a society, we've got to stop putting people on a pedestal just because they're athletes, famous, have money. Like, credit them for being good humans and good people rather than being good athletes or having money, for sure. How do you feel going into your next fight? The first one, you cleaned him up pretty quickly. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with the first one, mate. So I'm treating this one as a professional debut. Yep. It's a huge fight, Australian title. This is some this image is... from the first one, which didn't go for a long time. Well, you didn't give him a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Show me what you got. That's, that's a little bit mean. No, I have a terrible haircut, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're 24, you can you have you whatever upset? haircut you want. Were you upset with the ref because he stopped it? I was, yeah, I was really upset, mate, for sure. I really wanted to showcase my skills uh, as a professional athlete. And, and for now, I really want to showcase that on uh, Wednesday the 6th, yep. uh, next Wednesday. So I'm feeling good. Preparation's been good. A few more months with Johnny Lewis, the king of Australian yeah. boxing, has been unreal. So I'm excited, mate. And what did you see with Tim Zhu? A quick word on that fight? Mm. Oh, mate, he faced adversity, simple as that, and he showed up to fight. And... After round one, he absolutely dominated the fight. And I know there's come out today that he was sick um, in the lead up to that. And um, yeah, he just, he, he boxed unbelievable. He really cemented himself and he's going to be coming up against the best now for sure, I think. And someone for me, I'm 24, I'm really sort of, I want to walk in the footsteps as him, Cambosis. And Australian boxing is in a really good place at the moment. So what's yeah. the plans for the next two or three years? What's the goal? The goal is to be world champion in the next two or three years for sure. And then after that, try and unify the belts, maybe go up a weight class. I want to be one of the best ever and just got to keep training hard, keep loving it. That's the most important thing and, and having fun. I absolutely love the sport still. Well, uh, you talk it brilliantly. Uh, <laughs> <Thanks> Wednesday <laughs> is the next stepping stone for you. Wednesday, remember the 6th of April, uh, you can uh, watch Harry take on uh, Manuel Mate for the Australian. Is that how you say his name, Mate or Mate? Uh, yeah, Mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, yeah. okay. For the Australian. <laughs> Yeah, you the trash talking. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. I got you, Matteo. <laughs> right, you can watch it right here on Fox Sport. Harry, thank you so much. Lovely to have you here. Come thank back you very again. much. Guys.